When applying maintenance on bridges, one of the main questions that comes across is that how much improvement I would achieve in the condition of the structure uh, or like how much delay in the deterioration I would achieve given that I applied a certain type of intervention. Now, most of the time, the answer to such a question would be based on the experience and the judgment of the experts. However, in this work, we, we, get, we, we are attempting to answer such a question uh, based on data-driven and probabilistic approach. So my name is Zachary Amida, and the work I'm about to present uh, has been published under the title of uh, quantifying the effective interventions based on visual inspections from a network of bridges. So the breakdown or the outline for this presentation is gonna be as follows. First, we're gonna have a look at the context and objectives, and this we're gonna examine really uh, the main characteristics of the database that we have and our objectives in working with it. Uh, after that, we're gonna have a look at the deterioration model, which is like really a recap for an existing approach to model the deterioration. And then we, we would have a uh, look at the main section, which is uh, quantifying the effect of intervention. So I'm going to present in this section the methodology that we've developed to, uh, in order to quantify the improvement in the condition uh, of structures after applying an intervention. And finally, we're going to have a look at the analysis, which include like, analysis with uh, real data and synthetic data as well. So first, uh, let's start with the definitions. Uh, visual inspections uh, is a network scale monitoring technique uh, that would allow us to monitor the health state of uh, bridges within the network. So in our context, uh, the network is really composed of uh, a number of bridges. So we have like around 10,000 bridges uh, that are existing within a certain region. And in our case, it's really the province of Quebec. Now, some of these bridges are similar to each other in terms of like the type, the material, the traffic load, or maybe like uh, close and prox uh, approximately in location. However, some of them are like completely different. Now, in order to understand uh, how visual inspections uh, are performed on bridges, we need to, to know like what's within each bridge. So according to the manual of inspections from MTQ, each bridge is composed of uh, components that relates directly to the structural safety of the bridge, and uh, such as like the beams and the, the slabs. And the other type of components is really related directly to the serviceability of the bridge, such as like, the barriers and the pavements. So these uh, structural categories, each one of them is composed of a number of elements. So in this case, like we would have uh, within a bridge three slabs, 20 beams, and so on for each one of these categories. Now, visual inspections are applied directly on the structure elements. So at a given year, we would have uh, visual inspections are performed uh, for the, the slabs or, or like uh, for all the structural elements uh, together at the year 2008. And this, uh, these visual inspections uh, repeat like every one, every two to three years. So in this uh, example, we have it like uh, every three years. We have another round of uh, inspections. Now, uh, and it carries on. Now, for some of the structural elements, uh, we also have interventions that have been performed, which is like really the interest uh, in this. Uh, the main interest in this study. So we have information about when the intervention has occurred and uh, what type of intervention has occurred. So basically uh, within this study we're going to focus mainly on the structural element level and uh, so let's have a look and specifically the, uh, the intervention uh, related analysis. So let's have a look at uh, an example for a time series uh, with the uh, of visual inspections with interventions. So on this graph, on the x-axis, we have the timeline on a yearly scale. And on the y-axis, we have the condition ranging from 25 uh, for the worst condition up to 100 for a perfect condition. The inspection data are reported, or the visual inspection data are reported by the blue points. And each blue point is associated with an inspector and uh, 
uh, each inspector has uh, a unique ID. So in this case, uh, we'd have uh, uh, different inspectors uh, have performed the inspections over time. Now, in this case, again, because our focus is uh, mainly on uh, quantifying and modeling the effect of interventions, this case has an intervention that has been performed in the year uh, 2011. And um, you know, we represent the intervention by the shaded area, by the bluish shaded area on this, uh, on this graph. So our interest, again, mainly in this study is really to quantify the jump that we have in the condition as you would see uh, in, the, in the delta quantity here. So, uh, but as you notice, uh, again, like one of the characteristics for this uh, uh, database that we have, and in general for visual inspections, is that the data is limited. So we would have like three or four uh, visual inspection points over time. And uh, also one of the characteristics of visual inspections that are commonly known is that the data is subjective. So we, we, we should expect high variability because like we have different inspectors performing the visual inspection data. Now, our objectives in working with this uh, data, again, that was a case for one structural element. We have a lot of structural elements. And our objectives in working with this data is really to quantify the effect of interventions based on this visual inspection data. And so such that we can estimate the improvement in the condition and the speed following an intervention. And also we, we can estimate the service life of an intervention. So like how much time uh, after applying a certain type of intervention, how much time I would have until coming back to the condition prior to applying the intervention. So we're going to try to answer these question, two questions in this uh, research project. But before going through directly through these objectives, it's, it's essential to have an idea about the deterioration model that we've uh, employed in this study, because the deterioration uh, modeling really coincides with the uh, effective interventions uh, modeling. So the deterioration model that we've employed uh, have been uh, is already existing uh, uh, is based on framework that has been already published uh, by Amida and Goulet 2020, and this deterioration framework relies really on a kin kinematic model that would allow us estimating the deterioration condition and speed uh, over time. And it would allow us also estimating or quantifying the inspector's uncertainty, which is really essential uh, contribution for such a, for this framework. And also it would allow us exploiting the structural similarities. Uh, so it would allow us factoring in the structural attributes for each bridge within the deterioration analysis. Now this framework has been validated on real data and it's, it was also verified based on synthetic data that has been like ensured to be as similar as possible uh, to the real inspection database. So just to have an idea about this framework, we can have a look at a quick example for uh, the deterioration analysis. So in this example, there are not going to be an intervention. And again, this work has been already, uh, uh, this is an existing framework. So in this example, we're going to have a look at a synthetic case only for a beam structure element. On the x-axis, we have the timeline on a yearly scale. On the y-axis, we have the condition, again, uh, ranging from the worst condition at 25 up to the perfect condition at, at 100. And the inspection data are reported by the blue points, and uh, each inspection point is associated with an inspector. Now, uh, the uncertainty as quantified uh, according to the uh, uh, parameter estimation framework in, the, in this deterioration model is shown on this graph. And as you would see, the inspectors on the left uh, has a lower uncertainty compared to the inspectors uh, uh, on the right. And therefore, the model, the deterioration model, would side with the inspectors uh, on the left. Now, because we have, uh, because the synthetic data, we have the access to the true state. So if we plot the true state, we can see that it's within the confidence interval of the 
uh, deterioration model estimate, which really verifies that uh, the performance of uh, the deterioration framework. Now, this is for the deterioration analysis, and this is like really the quick recap I wanted to do. However, our main topic is really the effect of interventions. So in order to tackle this topic, we need to know like what are the uh, types of interventions that can be performed. So again, according to the manual of inspections from MTQ, the interventions can be quantified as uh, preventive maintenance or uh, routine maintenance, or uh, we have the uh, reparation or major activities such as uh, replacement. So uh, the first three categories are the ones that are uh, really of main interest because it's really the same structure element when we perform replacement it's a new structure element so we know that the condition would be like perfect in general but uh, for the first three categories it's uh, we have the we have the history data before the intervention and we have data also in general after the intervention so again, uh, this is uh, how a structural element with an intervention uh, would look like. And we are in interested in this uh, figure in estimating delta, which is the improvement in the condition. Now, looking back at the formulation of the uh, deterioration framework that we have already existing, the state vector in the deterioration framework, this is just to have an overview of the methodology. So the state vector of uh, the deterioration framework that already we have uh, is represented by xt, which is composed of uh, the xt as the condition, xt dot as the deterioration speed, and xt double dot as the, uh, uh, the acceleration. Now this uh, state vector, we can extend it or, uh, to include the improvement or the changes in the condition. So we have delta t to, that represent the change in, or the improvement in the condition, deterioration condition, and delta, uh, delta t dot, which represent the improvement in the deterioration speed, and delta t double dot, which represent the improvement in the acceleration. So the transition model that uh, we've employed in this analysis is really similar to uh, the same uh, transition model that we would have in, in the deterioration framework. However, AT here, uh, so we have XT equals to AT, the transition matrix multiplied by XT minus one, which is the state at T minus one, plus WT, which is the process error. Now, AT uh, is uh, the transition matrix becomes dependent on time. So whenever we are modeling a deterioration, and t is not equal to the intervention time tau, then like uh, our matrix AT is composed of AKI, which is the, the transition matrix for the deterioration framework, zeros of the diagonal, and the identity matrix on the diagonal. And similarly, when uh, for the process error, QKI represent really the process error associated with the kinematic model. Now, further details about these are really existing in the framework that has been already published about modeling the deterioration. So we see for QT, we have zeros all the way off and on the diagonal. Now, whenever we have a time step where we have an intervention, we make a change in the AT matrix. So of the diagonal, we add one identity matrix. And similarly, for QT, we add QTR, which is the process error associated with applying the intervention. And this is a matrix that we add to the diagonal. Now, for the QTR, is composed of uh, a diagonal matrix that is uh, with, the par uh, with parameters. So these parameters are to be estimated uh, using an uh, a, par a parameter estimation framework that's based on the log likelihood. And further details about this uh, formulation really exist in, uh, in the paper. Now let's see, uh, now in order to employ this framework uh, within a time series context, we need an estimate for delta t and delta t dot and uh, delta t double dot. So we need a prior estimate. This prior estimate can be obtained uh, really by passing over all the time series that underwent the same type of intervention. 
So let's see an example of that. So this example is really taken from synthetic data. And this is for the recursive estimation framework. So at the beginning, uh, if we look at the graph that we have here, we have the, uh, on the x-axis, we have the number of structural elements that underwent routine maintenance, which is the same type of intervention. And on the y-axis here, we have the delta, which is the improvement in the condition. So just like just to simplify and uh, uh, the framework and to, to illustrate it, uh, we're going to have a look at this example. And here we see that delta, the true delta is really around uh, plus 8. So the condition to improve by plus 8 points. So we start initially by setting mu delta to 0. And we pass we we pass over the first time series of uh, inspection data that underwent routine maintenance and then we do the forward run and then we do the backward run the backward run with the smoother the backward run would allow me to update my initial estimate of mu delta and as i see it would become like really 3.4 now i uh, since I have a lot of time series, I pass on another time series. So I would have uh, that underwent the same type of maintenance, but using the mu delta that uh, I, uh, I updated. And uh, based on it, I would have a further uh, updated um, or refined estimate for a mu delta, which is right now 4.9. And I carry on this for like all the structural elements that I have that underwent routine maintenance. And as we see that the curve has converged on the true value. So after like around 140 uh, times serious data, we've reached uh, an estimate for the condition to uh, to like 7.7, .7, which is really uh, an, a excellent performance uh, in this case. So this is like how the recursive uh, estimation uh, is performed to estimate, uh, to have a prior knowledge about uh, what could be the improvement uh, given the, uh, the type of intervention that we have. Now let's look at the time series examples uh, for um, this case. And uh, again, we're going to start with the synthetic data. So we have a look at structural elements that underwent routine maintenance. The, the graph on the left is for the condition and the graph on the right is for the speed and the, in, the, the inspection data are represented by the blue points for the condition along with the side of the inspectors and the intervention uh, has happened in year 2017 in the shaded area for the condition and the speed. Now we see if we want to plot our model performance with the inspectors uncertainty we see that uh, we have uh, our model estimate so before the intervention and after the intervention. And similarly for the speed, uh, before the intervention and after the intervention, we can see the jump. And now because this is synthetic data, we have access to the true state. So if we plot it, we see that the true state represented by the black dashed line is really within the confidence interval for the condition and similarly for, uh, for the speed. Now again, one of the premises uh, of uh, such framework is really to identify how uh, how long uh, this intervention uh, would last until it comes back to the condition prior to the intervention. So like in this case, until it comes back to a condition of 85. Now this is uh, estimated, uh, uh, now we see the estimate, so we, we can see uh, we would have a PDF estimate and this PDF estimate would tell us that uh, it's really around two, 2030 that after applying this uh, routine maintenance on this structure element, the condition would come back uh, to the prior intervention, most likely around like 2030. So this estimated using um, a formulation, and this formulation is really detailed uh, uh, in the paper available uh, in the link. So this is for one case for synthetic uh, data. Uh, and again, like because we have the uh, true state, we know when the condition came back. So we see that uh, it's really around the same uh, time as estimated. So this is one example of uh, synthetic data. There are definitely like more examples.
Now let's look for a population of structural elements that um, uh, underwent uh, the same uh, type of maintenance. So we can estimate the expected uh, value for the PDF uh, for at each year for how much uh, routine maintenance would last. And if we, uh, so this is the uh, estimate of the model. Now, if we plot the histogram, because this is again synthetic case, we know when for each time series, when the model came back to the condition prior to the intervention. If we plot the histogram, we can see that uh, the, the PDF estimate and the histogram are really uh, close uh, in terms of uh, the number of years to coming back. So this is a really a verification for a, a on a network scale where we have a lot of structural elements that um, under uh, underwent the same type of intervention. And this is uh, like uh, uh, for uh, the uh, certain type of intervention for uh, population structural elements. Now. Uh, this is for the synthetic data. Let's have a look at the real data. So again, we have the same graphs. Uh, this for uh, beam structural element that underwent reparation. We have the condition on the left, the speed on the right. The intervention happened in 20, 2011. And uh, we can see that the model estimate before the intervention and after the intervention, uh, as we see it here in the graph for the condition and the speed. Well, because this is real data, we don't have access to the true state. But however, we can still uh, perform the estimate for the service life of the intervention, how much time it will take to, for the intervention to come back to the original condition. And as you see here, the, the return to the uh, condition before the intervention is really most likely around uh, 2045. And uh, this again estimated in the same framework that uh, has been verified uh, already with synthetic data. So this is uh, for like one structural element. Now, if we want to have a look at uh, multiple structural elements, we can actually plot the CDF in this case. And uh, in this case, we can, we can tell that uh, for a given uh, number of years, so for example, 20% uh, of the structural elements that underwent the same type of intervention would come back to the condition prior to the intervention in, uh, in the first 10 years. Or like around 90% of the structural uh, structure element would come back to the condition uh, prior to the intervention. Uh, it will take them to come back like around 30 years. So this is like really the interpre interpretability of this CDF. And this CDF has been estimated for a population of uh, real uh, for structural elements uh, with real inspection data uh, 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 that has been uh, has has underwent the same type of intervention. So this is really for the uh, uh, real uh, data analysis. Now there are further analysis and there are further description about the methodology that we employ to obtain these uh, uh, graphs. Uh, these are available in the paper uh, that uh, is available in the link. So. Uh, this is like a general overview over the analysis section. Now for the conclusions, in this study we've uh, proposed a framework that would allow quantifying the effect of interventions uh, locally for each structural elements and globally on a network scale. Uh, we would have prior knowledge about like what's the effect of intervention of a given type of intervention on a structural element. And we've also enabled the estimation uh, in this uh, study we've showed that we can actually estimate the service life for interventions, which is how much time it would take to return to the condition prior to the intervention. And finally, the predictive capacity for the improvement in the condition and the speed has been verified and validated with uh, synthetic and real uh, data respectively. For further information and for further details are really all available uh, in the paper, which is available uh, in the uh, link in the video description. Thank you for listening.